Okay, before I start the video today, I'm going to do a breaking in video. This is uh, breaking news here. Uh, today, the Florida Department of Health reported 8,942 new cases of COVID-19, as well as 39 new deaths and 212 additional hospitalizations. The state reported a 13.5% positive rate for new tested testings conducted. The number of newly reported cases shattered the record for the most cases of COVID-19 reported in a single day. The previous record was set on Wednesday when the state reported 5,511. Today, they reported 8,942 new cases for the state of Florida. This is really not good, folks. I, obviously, I don't need to tell you that. In addition to that, uh, the uh, COVID-19 numbers climbing and cases trending younger Florida officials have made a decision to immediately prohibit the consumption of alcohol at bars statewide. So that's the breaking news. And now we'll start out with the video that I did earlier this morning. As you can see right here, it is now uh, 1258 when I did this. And I still don't have all of the new numbers in to do the numbers for you. As soon as I get those, I'll give you those as well. And a very pleasant good day to you all. It is June the 26th. It's Friday. It's my stay safe at home day 102. 102 days of this stay safe at home. It's getting a little bit old, I would say. I'm broadcasting from my technical operations center here in Vero Beach with all this glorious equipment behind me and have a wonderful time doing this. I would prefer to not do these things. I'd rather be doing my cooking videos and having fun just playing around, having a good time. So this isn't what I consider a fun thing to do, but I do enjoy doing it because I think I'm providing somewhat of a service and some of you people think so. So thank you so much for watching. Some headlines in the news today. The past two days have set Florida records for the most number of positive cases Two days in a row, we have been over 5,000 new positive cases. That's just unreal. I would have never believed that. I was hoping we were going to be on the downtrend and not the uptick. So this is not a good thing. I have a little bit more to talk to you about that later. For you folks who have never seen this before, I do these reports every day on the COVID-19 virus. I report the daily numbers from Dade County all the way up the east coast of Florida, from Melbourne and over to Orlando. I do this every day. I try to get these things posted about 1 o'clock because I don't get the final numbers in until about 11, and then I have to massage them and put them into the spreadsheet and try to make them easy for you to see. So that's what I do here, and I also say at this time, don't forget to push the like button. Please push the like button. I'm getting like 24 likes a day. That's a lot of likes, and I enjoy that, and I appreciate you appreciating what I do. That's the gasoline that makes this engine go. I probably should say it's the diesel fuel that makes this engine go. And I do shout outs every day. Shout outs today to Lynn F., Nancy S., Mary Sayer, Zandra Sim. Zandra Sim. Oh, she's a very attractive young lady. I can say that because she's a lot younger than I. And she operates a little boutique restaurant here in Vero Beach called Vines, V-I-N-Z. It's a fabulous little restaurant. She has a little uh, little bar that you can sit and dine at. And it's like I said, it's a boutique restaurant. So it doesn't seat more than maybe 40 or 50 people at the absolute most. And she does have some outside seating as well. Great operation. She's a good operator. She's a hard worker. Zandra Sim. Thank you, Zandra, for watching. Billy Moss. Billy Moss is somewhat of a faithful watcher. Thank you, Billy. If, if you're buying a restaurant, selling a restaurant, building a restaurant, Billy Moss is the guy you see. He will figure out where to put it. He's a local real estate guy, but he predominantly deals with restaurants. And then I also say hi to John Marks every day. John Marks, Polo Grill, Polo Bistro, uh, Polo, what else? What, everything he has is Polo. He's a living legend here in town uh, for the restaurant business, and he watches from time to time. And then my friend uh, Rob Young, I've been around since Rob Young was born down in Florida, and his dad ran the military academy and owned the military academy that I went to, and his dad was somewhat of my mentor. So, moving right along here, let's take a look at the weather forecast for the Treasure Coast today. Sunshine and clouds, high around 90 degrees here on the Treasure Coast. And for you boaters today, the wind's east at 10 to 15 miles per hour. We have about a 10% chance of rain, very little rain today. And then tonight, clear to partly cloudy 
low around 75 degrees. The winds east, southeast, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Once again, about a 10% chance of rain if we get any at all. Okay, let's take a look at some brief items in the news today. Months ago, as the COVID-19 virus was first spreading across the country, public health officials warned of the heightened risk it imposed on older populations and those with underlying health conditions, like me, older people like me. But officials are now wondering about the growing number of people that are younger that are getting this COVID-19. For example, like 29-year-old Jerry Ward, who told CNN he had to be hospitalized after going to a house party for his cousin's birthday. So all of a sudden, it's going down in the age group. And we know for sure that older people that have uh, underlying conditions, they're very, very much at risk and always have been, and that has not changed one bit. But it is getting into younger people now, especially people that are hanging out in bars and going to parties and where they're closely hanging out together. So it's a very, very bad thing. No turning back for Florida and Texas. The next two weeks are critical for the U.S., Dr. Fauci warns. Dr. Anthony Fauci told Congress on Tuesday that the next two weeks will be critical in how the country addresses the surge in states like Florida, Texas, and Arizona. So he's quite concerned about what's going on. That's sort of like we refer to him as the missing Dr. Fauci. He seems to have vanished from TV. We hardly ever see him anymore. And It seems like the government doesn't want to talk too much about how bad it is. They want to talk about how great it is opening up the economy. Uh, I think opening up the economy is an important thing. And as I said, every time I say this, this is such a delicate balance. My hands are way down here. It's a delicate balance of opening up the economy. There is no way we can shut down the entire country for the next 20 years until we come up with some solution. I know I'm overstating it, but let's say for a year. We can't shut down the economy for a year. That's impossible, and that can't happen. And we also can't go out and continue to infect everybody, and everybody gets sick, and everybody ends up in the hospital. So we have to balance this out. Come on, folks, you know how to do it. I don't need to tell you. In my opinion, we have not seen the worst of it, and the next couple of weeks are going to be hard. The only way to get out of this, as we know, is physical distancing, mask wearing, washing your hands, staying away from other people, all the things that the public health folks have been saying for a long time. (laughs) I've been saying that every day. I say that every day. I put it up on my screen every day. And I'm not preaching to you. I'm just trying to remind you. I, I, oh, by the way, I got my antibody test yesterday. It was $53. I got it at my doctor's office here in town. And he said, it's 99% accurate. And he said, we'll let you know within 24 hours. Well, sure enough, at the end of the day yesterday, I got a phone call and said, Mr. Kreider, got your results back. Uh, you have not had COVID-19. Well, I was hoping I had had it because maybe I would be immune to it. But nonetheless, I had it. It cost me $53. You can also go to the, uh, what is it called, the big, big red bus down in Palm Beach and donate blood. Anywhere you go to donate blood, they will probably give you a free antibody test. So that's just something to think about. You know, I always say knowledge is power. And if you have every little bit of new information you get is important information. So I know for sure that I don't have COVID-19 and it looks like I have not had COVID-19. So I know a little bit more than I knew before. Palm Beach County's mask mandate is now in effect. Those caught violating the terms of the mandate could face fines. And the debate on reopenings and mask mandates has been as hot as the summer heat so far this year, and there are many people that are totally split on these issues. So there's a lot of people out there that are saying, hey, I don't, I'm not going to wear a mask. I don't have to wear a mask. The Constitution says, I don't. you know, folks, you know, you can stand on your soapbox all day and talk about how you don't have to wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, and nobody can make me wear a mask. And if I go to court, I'll win. But are you concerned about your friends and your neighbors? And are you, what happens when you get sick? I have read about a lot of people. This is true. I saw it on the internet, so you know it's true. But I've read about a lot of people who were really anti-mask wearing and just went out and drank and had a really great time with all of their friends. And guess what? They ended up in the hospital. And then they said, boy, was I wrong. That was really a bad idea. You never know until it happens to you. So 
I, you know, I don't like to preach to you, but I do this every day because the reason I'm here is to report to you about all of these cases and how bad they are. And this is the worst we've seen it in Florida since we got started doing this. So I don't mean to stare, scare you. And I, you know, I, that people said, ah, I'm not watching that guy anymore. He's doom and gloom. Well, then don't watch me. It's perfectly okay. You're forgiven. I don't care if you don't watch me. That's just fine. There are some people who are interested in knowing how good or bad things are. I will be very happy when we can have our big party, which we've been talking about doing for a long time, and moving ahead and say, guess what? We beat this thing. It's over. It's done. But I don't see it getting over until we get a vaccine, and I don't see any vaccines coming around. They say maybe September. Dr. Fauci says maybe by the end of the year. So Let's keep your fingers crossed, say a couple of prayers, and hopefully things will get better. Next come the numbers that I will get around 11 o'clock. Good news, the website now seems to be working pretty well. And uh, I'm giving you a little bit of a comparison. I'm now telling you about the number of ICU beds that are available in all of the counties in addition to all the counties that I report. Have a really great day. Back in a flash. Alrighty, folks, let's take a look at the state of Florida. Here are the numbers for today. Today is June the 26th. And this is the worst day so far. I don't mind telling you that from the outset. But let's get started here for the entire state of Florida. New cases tested, 48,269. New positives, look at this number, 8,942. We passed right over the sixes and the sevens. We were in the fives and fours. 8,949, almost 9,000 new positive cases in the entire state of Florida. And then we move over here to the uh, ICU beds that are available, 1,296 beds are available for the entire state. New hospitalizations, 212, and new deaths reported in the entire state of Florida are 37. That brings our testing rate to 6.95%, 6.95%. I don't know where the state came up with the number that they reported, uh, the article I read to you earlier about some much higher number, but it is it says 6.95%. I'm not quite sure where, how that equates, but nonetheless, there's what it is. Uh, in Indian River County, they tested 485 new cases, for 62 new positives, no new hospitalizations, nine uh, ICU beds available, and no new deaths reported for Indian River County. Testing rate is 42 to two. That number has come up somewhat. New cases tested in Dade County in the past 24 hours, 7,803. New positives in the Miami area, 1,542, excuse me, 1,532. And then we take a look at the new hospitalizations, 42. ICU beds available in the Miami area, 214. New deaths reported in the Miami area, 11. And their testing rate is 10.62. In Broward County, they tested 4,403 in the past 24 hours. New positives, 736. Uh, new hospitalizations, 13. ICU beds available, 108 and deaths reported to their testing rate is 7.33. Now everything is compared back to the state of Florida at 6.95, and that number is always supposed to be under five for sure. Let's go to Palm Beach County now. In Palm Beach County, they tested 4,174 in the past 24 hours. New positives, 658. New hospitalizations, 43. ICU beds available, 91. And four new deaths were reported in the Palm Beach area and their testing rate is 9.32. In Martin County, that's Stewart, 181 new testings, 40 new positives, four new hospitalizations, 21 uh, ICU beds available, and no new deaths were reported, but their number has popped up to 11.11%. In St. Lucie County, that's Fort Pierce, 271 new testings, 57 new positives, Two new hospitalizations, eight ICU beds available in St. Lucie County. That's getting very low. Eight beds available there. There are eight beds. There are only nine available up in uh, here in Vero Beach, but eight there. And there were no new deaths reported. Their testing rate is 6.87%. In Brevard County, they have tested recently 1,414 cases in the past 24 hours. They reported 148 new positives. 
new hospitalizations two, ICU beds available 43, and new deaths reported zero. They have a 3.31% rate. And then in Orange County, 4,364 new tests, uh, new positives, 1,062. 1,062 new positives in the Orlando area. Four new hospitalizations, 56 ICU beds available, and one new death reported for a rate of 6.38. All right, back one more time to look at this horrible number, 8,942 new positives tested in the past 24 hours were reported in the entire state of Florida, of which 48% of those are over here in the counties on the left-hand side, in the yellow counties on the left-hand side. So 4,295 of the 8,942 are all located in these counties on the left-hand side in yellow. We go over to new hospitalizations. There are 212 new hospitalizations in the entire state of Florida. 110 of those are in these yellow counties on the left-hand side, or 51.89%. There are 550 ICU beds available uh, out of the in, in our area, in the yellow area, but there are a total of 1,296 beds in the entire state. But of that, 550 are in these yellow areas over here. And then we take a look at the new deaths reported, 37 deaths in the entire state. 18 of those are in the yellow areas over here, or 48.65%. All righty, folks, there were some really terrible numbers. Sorry to report those, but that's my job. I got to tell you the good news and the bad news, and there hasn't been a whole lot of good news lately. I didn't want to leave you without a pet patrol today because I've been People have been upset that there hasn't been a pet patrol, but let me give you my quotes for today, my positive quotes for today, and then we'll do a very quick pet patrol and we'll be out of here. Okay, so this one is, I never lose, either I win or learn. I never lose, either I win or learn. Nelson Mandela. Makes a lot of sense. I like that. Never. Okay, problems are not stop signs. Their guidelines, Robert Schuler. Problems are not stop signs, they are guidelines. Go the extra mile, it's never crowded there. Go the extra mile, it's never crowded there. Even though you're fed up, you've got to keep your head up. Even though you're fed up, you've got to keep your head up. So when you get into a really big jam and everything's going wrong and all that sort of thing, rather than walking around moping around and keeping your head down, put your head up and say, well, remember like Chesty Puller said at the Chosen Reservoir in Korea, he was awakened by his lieutenant in the morning and the lieutenant said, General Puller, we are totally surrounded by the enemy. And he leaped out of his bunk and he said, well, they won't get away this time. So keep your head up. Always keep your head up. All righty, folks. So here we go. Stand by here for just a second. Now, here's a pretty good picture of a dog. Look, is this a beautiful dog or what? This dog's name is, hang on a second, let me get to the right page. This is Kate Beckwith Woody. This is Kate Beckwith Woody's dog. This is a fabulous dog. Look at that dog. Isn't he beautiful? His name is Taddy, T-A-T-T-Y. And she got him a couple of years ago. And uh, I just happened to get a, a, a copy of this picture. And I thought you should see it because this is a fabulous dog, Taddy. Kate Beckwith Woody here in town. Really, really nice gal. And her daughter is Ridgely. Her daughter is a fabulous chef as well. So that's Taddy. And I wanted you to see the Pet Patrol today. Didn't want to leave you behind. And then don't forget what I say every day. You know what I say every day about this time. Always be a part of the solution and never part of the problem. Always be a part of the solution and never part of the problem. And push the like button. Please, please, please push the like button if you like this. Have a very blessed Friday, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Oh, I hope the numbers are going to be better tomorrow. How could they be any worse than they are today? Anyway, have a very blessed and wonderful Friday. Tomorrow's Saturday. It's a weekend.